Continuing on with the basic ideas of concept design, we're going to go through a torso. And we're going to zoom in just a little bit and try to reverse engineer what happened with this um, sort of biomechanical human hybrid thing. The uh, torso, of course, is basically your rib cage, your pelvis, and the connective tissue that goes between them. And here we get to have kind of a lot of fun with it because we're going to base this on anatomy, but we don't have to stick to it too closely when we get into the phase where we draw out all the really interesting bits. So your rib cage um, needs to kind of be this sort of egg shape with a little V split in the middle of it to create the sternum. And in this case, you're looking at it from the side, and you can see a little bit of the far side of the rib cage because the figure is a little bit turned. You're not looking at a direct profile. So you want to be able to find the corner of that because anytime you can, you can latch onto the corner of a form, that's going to give you uh, a lot more opportunity to develop this sense of dimension within the forms. Any anatomical knowledge that you might have. Uh, will come into play here. So you can see I found the corner of the form and then I can start to add all these crazy details and just go nuts with adding different sort of rope-like structures or box forms on top of this existing structure. And as you add to it, you don't want to lose the sense that these forms are going in and around a larger structure. So the smaller forms have to be developed um, in accordance with the larger forms that you set up initially. And if you didn't, then that would be weird because you shouldn't have spent all that time developing those larger forms in the first place. You could have gone straight to the smaller forms. So what we're doing here is creating a bunch of rope-like and box-like forms uh, to give this figure a mechanized but organic feel. So these ropes are kind of going to be a little bit they're going to have bulges and twists in them. And essentially that hinges on your ability to draw a, a cylinder in a bunch of different angles. Um, we're going to use a little bit of human anatomy too. You know, abstract, abdominal muscle structure, uh, mark where the belly button would go, and so on. And base these kind of rope ideas and tubes and corners on what we actually see in the figure. So here we're going to focus on the corner of the rib cage and develop that edge so that you get an idea that the rib cage kind of turns around the uh, the figure. Um, and we can use form following uh, marks to kind of emphasize that as well. Um, we can use a little bit of muscle structure and emphasize that. and. Right now we're drawing as if we are, as if we've just turned off the arm completely and we're looking directly through it. So we're not going to work on the connective tissue between torso and arm really, uh, because we need to get that arm out of the way to see what's going on with the actual torso. Um, and as you develop your concept designs, you don't have to do complete figures necessarily. Sometimes good to get your overall figure and, and an idea of what that figure will look and then zoom in and really get into the detail of the of certain sections of the figure so it can kind of um, help you develop a lot of clarity with the design. Once you get into the uh, stage where you're adding a, a sense of lighting you have to do the poster and develop the shadow core. And the, the stage where you develop shadow cores is going to be pretty complicated because you have all these smaller forms with all of, with each of which has an individual shadow core. So that means that you're going to need to spend a good amount of time right after the poster just getting shadow cores developed so that you can um, give each individual form its sense of dimensionality and lighting. As you progress towards the end of your study of whatever bit of anatomy that you're working on or your design, you, know, you do want to pay attention to how you're handling those edges and so on. Um, and as always, you want to work on 
what connects one form to the next? How do the forms overlap? How do they project? And how do they go in and out of space dimensionally? Um, if you're thinking about those concepts, even if you get them wrong, you're thinking in the right direction and your drawings will follow eventually. So this should be pretty fun once you get into the stage of, of embellishing and adding your own kind of twist to these designs. The trick is to flip your thinking into three dimensions so that you're not working just on the contours and just on the outer edges. Because the interesting thing about life drawing and the interesting thing about good concept designs is what goes on within the edges of the figure. Um, anyone can do a contour drawing, but there are very few people that can develop forms in space um, and mix what, what they see in front of them with what's in their head. And that synthesis is where uh, concept design gets pretty interesting and where you're going to have the most fun. So um, if you focus on uh, using your knowledge of form and try to create your visual ideas, I think you're going to have pretty successful concept design drawings. Um, and remember, too, that concept design is about visual ideas. It's not about verbal ideas or ideas that show up, that can only show up in your head. It's about what you can get down and convey on the page. So have fun with this, and we'll uh, break down some more stuff in a second.